Good evening. The show is the smoking section, and I'm delighted to have Sammy Her Herbawi on the program tonight. Sammy, thank you for coming by. Thank you for inviting me. You must be a very busy man running Andala Coffee House, I think it's called, right? Coffee that's, House, Andala that's Coffee House. Uh, Andala Coffee Shop. Coffee House. That's good. Well, it's Coffee House. Coffee House. Yes. And uh, we enjoyed that very much because they have a very, very beautiful uh, cafe outside where Cambridge Citizens for Smokers' Rights would go and smoke last summer. And we tried uh, the water pipe, I think, what do you call it? Shisha, Nardala, what do you call it? It has a variety of names. Some people call it hookah, some people call it shisha, some people call it nargila. Oh, it so the in the, are, these, are those all Arabic names? No, some is Turkish, some is Indian, and some is Arabic. And so what do, is it normally called, uh, let's say, in, in uh, Jerusalem, in where, Jerusalem, where you are from? It's shish. Yes. And uh, so you know, I tried it once, but I, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I think it takes a little getting used to. You got to get used to it then, because it's a lot of inhaling. <laughs> it's a lot of inhaling. That's good. Well, you know, uh, well, you probably remember at, uh, at Algiers, you know, uh, Emil. Emil, yes. We used to be able to smoke uh, shisha upstairs there. That's correct. That's and correct. Uh, I remember smoking a shisha with a, a fellow from Cyprus, uh, and it was very, very enjoyable. But it takes a little getting used to. If you, I'm used to cigarettes, cigars, pipes, and that type of thing. It's a little different. It's a little different. And but I think it it really kind of calms people down and makes them sociable. Don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely, for uh, for lots of people, they go in the afternoon after work, after busy day, and they sit down in coffee shops and they drink some tea or coffee and they have a smoke. And that's very different because you know it's unlike alcohol, where if you have alcohol, you might not be able to drive, or you might do something stupid, or you you know it, it does not create behavioral problems. Or put you to sleep. Or put you to sleep. In fact, it sharpens the brain, I think. It does. <laughs> now, I'm curious, do you know, did you recognize the man uh, who is this man here on uh, our uh, smoking section? Do you know that man? He's a very, very famous man here in uh, Boston. He is deceased, unfortunately, but... Remind me with that person, please. That is Red Auerbach. Okay. And he was the, I guess, the owner or, yeah, the owner of the Celtics. Celtics. I'm, see, I don't really follow sports myself. Me, me neither. So uh, Red, Red Auerbach was the owner of the Boston Celtics for many, correct. many years. That's correct. And that's correct. have you ever seen the statue of him down at um, yes. Fanel Hall? Yes, I did. Yes. So um, I was interested to learn that Andala means nightingale in uh, Arabic, I assume, yes. Andala is the song of the nightingale. The sun. The, night the nightingale is the bird, and Andala is basically the song of the bird. So you mean the child of the bird, the or the song, song? The song of the bird. I see, I the, see. The, the Andalib, which is, if you have a beautiful voice, they call you Andalib. Hmm, interesting. Is, like. Yeah. Like and one of the most famous uh, Arab singer, he passed away, his name Abdul Halim. And he always called uh, El Andalib. So he has a... A voice of a nightingale, or the, the song the of a nightingale. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've ever heard a nightingale. Well, maybe you should. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, are, are, uh, can you hear nightingales in Jerusalem? Of course. Of oh, course, really? Yeah. Is yeah. that right? Now, when people come on the program, I sometimes ask them about their... Uh, their experience with tobacco. Now, for example, when I was a child, uh, my mother and father, they smoked a lot. And, you know, I, my father would blow smoke rings in my face and so forth, and I liked it. But some people uh, don't, don't like smoke. When you were a child, were you exposed to a lot of secondhand smoke? And I assume in, in Jerusalem, you must have been around shisha and all of those kinds of things. Did it bother you or not? Well, my, my, my dad is a smoker, uh, bless his soul. He passed in 1991. But uh, truly, honestly, smoking is not something that, you know, even everybody, when they come to everybody's house, the first thing they have, they have a tray full of different package, different brand of cigarettes, because uh, smokers will not change the brand of the smoking. He's oh, that's so right, because each person likes his own exactly. brand. Exactly. So when we invite people, we don't know what kind, so we have different brands of cigarettes they invite Very them. nice, yeah. very nice. 
So it's part of our culture. We invite them, and we have, uh, you know, at least ten different packages. So if you smoke Marlboro versus something else, you would choose the Marlboro instead of you forced to smoke one brand. And in in Jerusalem, do they smoke mostly um, American cigarettes or Egyptian cigarettes? Or? They smoke all. They have local uh, brands, and they have uh, and they have European or American cigarettes as well. And as a child, were you ever bothered by the smoke of your parents or? It any? never, never, honestly, never bothered me. I am not a smoker, and I'm not sitting here to promote uh, smoking. But what I would like to tell the world that if you are 18 years of age and you can uh, drive and you can get married and you can join the army and die, I think you should be able to smoke. I, I, I think. You know, to make that decision on your own, I think uh, people should have that little freedom and that little uh, uh, right to choose. If I choose to smoke or if I choose to be at home where people smoke, and if it bothers me, I would leave. If it doesn't bother me, I would stay. Well, you know, today the headline of the Boston Globe was that I think it was, um, let's see, last year, we were in 2015, uh, you know, I really should have read the article more carefully. I think they had 1,000 deaths in this state last year, 2014, uh, from opioid poisonings. Opium. Opi o opium. Right. Well, not opium. No, no, no. Opium. Uh, opioid things that are similar to, uh, you know, heroin and prescription drugs, and the in the whole history of the Commonwealth which is about 400 years, I don't think they've ever had uh, one single overdose death from nicotine uh, or from the smoking. I mean, no one has ever had three or four picks of cigarettes and dropped dead. You know, don't you think it's strange that with 1,000 deaths from opioid poisonings, uh, opioid overdoses, it seems like all our city council and all the government can think about is making life difficult for us smokers and for those businesses like yours who are hospitable to us. I think, you know, we, we can talk a lot about million different things, you know, the causes of death that related to non-smoking versus smoking. And I always gave an example. I said, if I put 100 people in a small room mm -hmm. and let them smoke for the whole year, Right. Each and every one smoke of them. And I want to know how many people will die. Right. And if I put the same 100 people in the same room with one carbon monoxide car exhaust fume for 10 minutes, and I really? want to see how many people will live. Right. So it, so it seems to me secondhand <laughs> smoke is not so dangerous, certainly it's not compared never with... never, ever been proven in any studies, scientific or non-scientific, that secondhand smoking will, will, will kill you or overdose or you die from. Right. Like, for example, they talk about how poisonous it is, but each year we hear uh, here in Massachusetts somebody has a um, heater that's not working right, and in a couple of hours they're dead. But we've been to very, very smoky bars where people stay and people work for eight, nine, ten hours, and no one drops dead. Nothing happened to them. Right, yeah. right. So this, you know, this calls into question the honesty of some of our public health officials. Now, for example, Sam Lipson, uh, who is the uh, person who is working with the Cambridge Housing, excuse me, not Cambridge Housing, but Cambridge Health Alliance, who is kind of the what we call in English the point man, the man who, are you familiar with that phrase, the no, point man? No. The person who pushes something. Like okay. he, you know, he says that secondhand smoke is so bad that um, we have to, uh, ban smoking even in outdoor areas like at Andala or Algiers or at Shays, you know, all of or at Bon Pan. Uh, do you think he really believes that, or do you think it's kind of an issue that he really just wants to control uh, smoking and smokers and make it difficult for us to enjoy our lives? I think I think uh, it's it's taking away the freedom of from from the individual. That's what I think. And um, but to prove if if he has any studies to prove that secondhand smoking will kill people, then I want to know about the cars and the MGOs they put in the food and all these things. So they have to ban.
to ban everything. They have to ban people even from walking on the street uh, rather than just. But you smoke. know, to a lot of people like me, smoking is one of those pleasures. I didn't that even makes... know you're smoking. Oh, I smoke. Of course, I smoke. <laughs> I smoke cigars, pipes, cigarettes, so and I also use you to the to... hookah. To well, the you know, I'd like to, <laughs> but um, well, you know, I'm, it, it's very nice that Dennis Benzan <laughs> has seemed to work to get the city council to at least at least permit those few restaurants in Cambridge that uh, in their cafes allow hookah smoking, uh, that he has, it, was, it seemed to be that he was the one who made that possible. Absolutely, absolutely. And we cannot thank him enough for doing that, initiating that. And, and basically, it's when you take away, especially small coffee shops in the area, uh, we're not talking about uh, uh, franchised and, and huge corporations. They have thousands of stores, and if they don't smoke in this store, they probably smoke in other towns, yeah, or in other states or in other cities. But uh, for some person who has only one coffee shop or one restaurant, and to forbid them from uh, practicing what, what, what the, the whole goal or the whole image of to have coffee shop is for the purpose is to basically explore your culture to the rest of the world, and especially if you are in the United States, especially if you are in Central Square, Cambridge, Mass, you, you want to show the whole world what's your culture and what kind of things you do in your own. Do you get a lot of people, let's say a lot of uh, Arabic people coming to, to your store in the, uh, in the summertime specifically to smoke shisha? Yes, we get Arabs and non-Arabs, we get everybody, we get all, all walks of life. And come. they enjoy shisha. And enjoy it very much. Enjoy it very much. And we make sure we check their ages and and we check. Their you know, but I, you know, even Sammy, I used, I, you know, I don't even see the big deal about. I don't know why someone has to be 18 years old. I mean, all the students in, you know, in uh, Cambridge who are teenagers, they're all smoking pot. They're all <laughs> drinking. <laughs> They're all, now they're driving, many of them are driving cars at 16, which can kill them instantly. And, um, you know, so why is it that to smoke a cigarette or to smoke a shisha is something that we have to be so careful for, for 18 year olds? I, you know, the idea of years old is, is somebody should be making that decision on their own. I think the, the brain of the individual stopped growing maybe in the age of 35 or more. Right. And uh, but some guidance, you know. And I, 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 I like to give guidance to young people. I like to advise them not to smoke for w many reasons. And one of it is financially. The other one is something they, it's not, you know, they, they shouldn't do. But if they, if they, after 18 years old, if they want to do it and they want to make that choice, I like them to do it. And I like them to be free of doing it, without without the hustle and without well, the. Well, of course, the city council in Cambridge has now you made know? it 21 to buy cigarettes. Yeah, but the 21 is is not is not right because why would you join the army when you are 18 and they allow you and you can die, fight and die for for your uh, for whatever you're fighting for, but not to smoke. And you can isn't be that, you can be that, executed like, at 18. Course, you can be married. Course. You can buy you can a do buy anything. a house. You can star in a porn movie if you want to, you That's know, correct. all of these That's things. That's correct. That's correct. And you can have sex. All of these things are legal, but tobacco will. Okay, let me. You, we, you were, you know, we were. Cambridge Citizens for Smokers' Rights was very pleased and very thankful that you appeared at the city council. And it's interesting because we are supposed to be a free country. Everybody talks about America is a free country, the free world. Barack Obama is the leader of the free world. But you were about the only person, uh, other than us, who even talked about freedom. I mean, none of the city councilors spoke about individual freedom. Are it, it seems we are becoming a very what we call paternalistic. The government's going to take care of you, make decisions for you, uh, you know, tax you so you make the right decision. Uh, did you find that? Uh, unsettling that that our city council is so interested in not freedom but in imposing its will on the public i think it's not the city council or the government to interfere with somebody who wants to smoke a cigarette 
smoking, cig smoking cigarettes supposedly harmful, but harmful to those who smoke it. If there is any harm, my, my dad lived to be uh, 79 years old when he Which died. Which is a reasonable age to okay. live, in. yes. And I know people who smoke and, and they live to, to be 100 years old. Right. And never ever, you know, felt that smoking is uh, something that that horrible. I mean, I can imagine somebody who's driving a car and, and drinking. Yes. He can go kill himself right. or herself or kill other people. Right. And that's that's something, you know, you, you should not tolerate. That's horrible. But if you smoke a cigarette and you drive, I don't think you're going to kill anybody or you're going to kill yourself. No. So that's the that's the, the the big issue I have. So smoking is not is not something that a proven that second hand smoker can be bothered or be uh, getting sick or or anything from from second hand smoking. So I, I I would allow it. And if you have a household and in your household you don't allow smoking, that's that's your right. That's your house. And that's your house. But outside, it's it's. But it's what a about public? A, don't you think a business owner in Cambridge, like a coffee shop or a bar, should be able to allow smoking inside as well? Make the same decision. I think it used to be a long time ago. I don't remember the time, but it used to be section for smoker and section for non-smoker. That's right. About twelve years ago yeah. was and when I it think, changed. And I think I think that's fine. If if I want to sit down. Uh, in a table where people next to me smoke, I don't want to sit next to it. I would sit to a place where it's non-smoking. Right, but they don't want that. And uh, f unfortunately, well, that's what Cambridge Citizens for Smokers Rights is all about, freedom and tobacco. Uh, you know, Sammy, we always have a uh, smoker of the week. OK. And so now we're going to go to the smoker of the week. This is always an exciting part of the show. OK. I hope. Anyway, let's go right here. Ah, here we are. Now, this man is an Egyptian, and his name is Mahfouz. Okay. Nagib Mahfouz. Nagib Mahfouz. Is that how you pronounce yes. that? Yes. Do you, an, have you heard of him? Of course. I read his books. He's really? How do you pronounce author. that name? Najib Mahfouz. Boy, Najib that's not easy Mahfouz. to pronounce. Yeah. Najib Mahfouz. Mahfouz. Yeah. Mahfouz? Mahfouz. 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 Yeah. Mahfouz yeah. Well, this was an article about him in the, in the New York Times, and he has written, according to this uh, article, 35 novels and 15 collections of short stories. And uh, every night, uh, he has a lot of people come over to his house to chat about uh, intellectual things, presumably. Uh, and he is 90 years old. Uh, and so his doctor told him not to smoke so much. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, and so his doctor told him, according to this article, to only smoke, uh, to, he was only allowed to smoke two cigarettes a day. Okay. But Mr. Mahfouz, Mahfouz, figuring he's been smoking 70 years, uh, decided he could risk another cigarette that night <laughs> at 90 years old. So is he famous throughout the Arabic world? Yes, he is. And uh, what kind of books? Is it, are these fiction books that he writes? He, or? Lots, he wrote lots of uh, novels, and they made them movies. And uh, one of his famous, uh, I can recall two of them. One is called Al-Lisw Al-Kilab, The Thief and the Dogs. And the other one is Al-Mada, which is narrow passages it's called the the Zael Mada Nero passages of Mada in part of Egypt. And well, if I were to read life. one of his books, because I'm not going to read all of them, uh, and I, I would have to read it in English, because I of course it, I, it's too late in my life to translate it. The only Arabic I know is Salam Alaikum. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. And Inshallah. <laughs> Very good. That's even more than Alhamdulillah. Lots, lots Alhamdulillah. Of people. That, that's the extent know. of my Arabic. <laughs> so if I were going to read one of his books. Which one should I read? I would uh, recommend al al Kilab, you know, the thieves, uh, the, the thief, thief and the dogs. The thief and the dogs. Yeah, al Kilab, the thief and the dogs. Yes, well, here he is at 90 years old after smoking 70 years, <laughs> and he looks in pretty good shape. Now, um, you know, uh, we, we found out, uh, well, I don't think I'm going to go there, but listen, you know, 
Sami, they're also banning smoking in public housing. Yeah, that's that's very hard because because the way I look at it, if you if you live in an in a, in a public housing, and especially if you are an elderly or you suffer from uh, handicapped or, or suffer disease or anything, I think it's very unfair for you not to smoke in your own place and to go outside and or to go somewhere, even, you know, in, in a designated area, I don't think it's fair. Well, I let think. me ask you a question. You know, yes. I mean, this may be getting into an area that is uh, very sensitive to you, but okay. and if it is, I apologize. <laughs> The music goes back on, <laughs> and um, but you know, many people, you know, inc including our good friend P. F. Soto, yes, uh, are very, very concerned about the violation of the rights of Palestinian people. Yes, but my question to you, and let me just show you this photo um, that uh, you know, and show our, our viewers this photo. This is a woman who lives in public housing up in Burlington, Vermont, where it's very cold, you know. Yes, yes. And you see she's disabled. Yes. Now, she not only cannot smoke in her own apartment, but she cannot smoke on the grounds of public housing. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but she has like what you call a walker there. Yes, yeah, I see it. <laughs> you see it? Yes. You know, and I mean, to me, this seems like almost a form of abuse, especially to elderly people and to women and to people who are disabled, either mentally or physically, to say to them, you cannot smoke in your apartment. I don't care how cold it is. I don't care how dark it is or how dangerous the streets are. This, this seems to me like a kind of abuse uh, of public health that borders on the, the kind of abuse that many people feel Palestinians are suffering. Not to the same extent, but... Yeah. You know, I don't think it's, I would not even use the word abuse, I, I think it's a, it's a form of punishment. Right, but I mean... It's a form of punishment, and form of punishment in a way that you, your right, your God-given right is taken away from you, and that's what I don't like. I like a, a human being to be free and to be able to practice anything they want to, as long as it's not, is, is illegal, in the world of, you know, harming people or, or doing something wrong in the. But I mean, someone like Sam Lipson. Do you remember? Do you remember Sam Lipson? I remember him. Yes. I mean, he works for the Cambridge Health Alliance. He would say, "Oh, we're doing this to protect other people from secondhand smoke, and we're no. doing this to discourage children, and we're doing this for your own good." You know, to I mean, don't you think that's a form of medical to abuse? To discourage children, uh, the, you know, I, I have five children. And five? I, I didn't realize that. To discourage them from lots of things, and one of them is the video games. Oh, really? <laughs> really? But it's not working, you know? No? It's not working at well, for all. Well, for it, it, it works for the girls, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> isn't it only boys who play video games? Well, the girls, they're not interested in the games. That's, that's right. That's what I mean. Thing. I mean, you know, it <laughs> seems like a very... But the girls. A very, <laughs> it seems like a very sex-linked, uh, what we call sex-linked yeah, thing. Discouraging the game from the one who plays it, and the girls, they don't play the game. The boys, they do. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Ken, our good friend Ken Reeves, told me that, for example, there are a lot of young men uh, who graduate from high school here, okay. and they sp and that it, maybe they don't go to college, and they spend a couple of years uh, smoking pot and playing video games, and they completely get themselves to the point where they're unable to be unemployed. I hope your I hope your sons are not in that condition. Well, they're not smoking pot, and they're in college, so <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. But that's what my good friend and our good friend Ken Reeves said. Yeah. Uh, just on a, a lighter note, how how long Andala has been around? About twelve years, I think, yes, right? Yes. Yes. And before it was there, I think there was a seamstress shop, wasn't mm, it? No, before it it was it was the coffee shop of it's called the uh, Ross Cafe Ethiopian, and before that used to be a bridal. bridal but that's right, a woman. A, shop. a woman did that. A bridal shop. Yeah. I was. Well, I mean, do you think there's any chance that we can get the city council to rescind? this ban on smoking in cafes. We have a petition which you signed. We have about 500 signatures or 600 signatures already. Um, we are resisting this. The Cambridge Citizens for Smokers' Rights, we are like, what we consider ourselves as resistance. 
Okay. You know, like when France was occupied by the Germans. They created resistance. There was a resistance, That's right? That's correct. Tout pas français, correct. no? Oui. You know, there was so, a resistance, and we are the resistance. We don't necessarily look to win battles. We look to slow down, impede, uh, disrupt. Or change. Hopefully change. Yeah, we, but we, we are fight, resisting. We fight, for, we fight for the change. La resistance, like what happened in Algeria against yes, the French. That's like correct. the French against the Germans, and then the Algerians against the French. I believe persistence, and I believe the continuation of the fight, because if you believe in your cause, and it's uh, the right cause and the just cause, I don't think you should stop, and you should well, doing it. thank you. And thank you. That's very, very encouraging. And, and we really, you know, we really, can we count on you, Sammy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sammy, thank you. That is just such a wonderful My thing pleasure. to hear. My pleasure. My and pleasure. Sammy, you have a lot of very lovely people who work for you, a lot of very nice people. And if any of them are interested, I don't know, do you do Facebook? I think so. You, th you don't not, know if you do Facebook or well, not? Well, I have people who does it because I'm not involved with the Facebook business. <laughs> I don't have a Facebook. Well, myself. we have a Facebook page, and please yeah. like us. Sammy, thanks for coming on tonight. We're almost out. Uh, good night, and please visit.